Okay, we're going to take a look at exercise 10.7, which is the pavement markings exercise. We're going to be in our manual. Scroll down 10-17. So you want to find that location in your manual in Chapter 10, dealing with pavement markings. The first thing that we're going to do in here is we're going to open up the corridors file, and we're going to hit F6 once we get in there, which opens up our 2D and 3D window. And then we're going to open up the ITL for this project. So there is a Create Template tool out there, which is the little template with a hammer, and that will allow us to go pick our ITL. So first thing we're going to do is go open up our ramp for drawing. So we're going to go out into project wise. Okay, we're going to go into our location and we should have a ramp four there for corridors. So we're going to open that up. When that opens up, we're going to go ahead and hit the F6. F6 opens a 2D and a 3D window. Okay. We can kind of zoom in over here to our ramp 4, which you can kind of see there. We don't have any pavement markings on it right now, so we're going to add those to it, linear pavement markings. And in our 2D window, this is the start of ramp 4. Okay, so we are in that location. So let's take a look then at our next step, which is opening the ITL. So we're going to go into the template with the hammer on it, which is the Create Template tool, and open our ITL. So across the top in the ribbons, we've got corridors. Let's go in there, expand that out. We've got template right here with the hammer on it. We're going to go ahead and left-click it. And it op tries to open the MoDOT ITL, which is fine. Since we just opened the program, it's trying to open that ITL up. And we're just going to go up into the File pull-down menu and go to Open. And we're going to try to open the ITL that is in our, in our case, is in Data 10. And there is the J5P3181 ITL file. So we'll open that up. That contains all of our templates for this project. Once we get it in there, let's take a look and examine what we have. We have a, a folder in here for our project. And what we're going to be looking at is pavement markings. So I'm going to go ahead and expand that out just to look at it. We've got one lane and we've got two lane. We're going to be looking at ramps. So we've got a, a ramp in here for this. We can go ahead and close out of that. We just want to make sure we're in the correct template library and that we have the pavement markings folder. So we'll close that out and we'll go ahead and check that in. Okay, You could do this in the ITL and then synchronize this template if you wanted to um, or you can do it with the actual template drops that you have in your drawing. I prefer using the template drops that you have in your drawing because you may want to change uh, what markings that you have per template. So you might have some markings that run through here uh, for one template drop and then another set of markings for this template drop. And you can modify them in the drawing themselves. So that's how I'm going to do this one. So if you're following along in the manual, we've gone in and checked our uh, ITL and we've reviewed the 2D and 3D corridors. So we saw that there no pavement markings currently. We need to add those in. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find the, the handle or the grips for our template drop, which will be a purple dashed line. And we're going to edit that template drop. So let's do that. Let's edit that template drop. So we can find this first one here. So we'll left click on it. We'll get the heads up. And that second tool in there is to edit the template drop. So let's do that one. And that should pull up that template. If we zoom in here, we'll see we don't have any points above our roadway anywhere here or over here. We don't have any. 
Uh, but there is our center line. So we're, that's where we're going to attach our template for our pavement markings. So I'm going to kind of zoom in where I can see that. And then on the left hand side, we're going to go in and open up the pavement markings folder. If I look in my exercise here, once the template drop appears in the editor, locate the pavement markings folder, which is what we just did, step seven. And we're going to expand the one lane ramps. And we're looking for the four inch white right edge and the four inch yellow baseline. So let's see if we can do that. One lane ramps here on the left. I believe it's the first one in there. Four inch white right edge, four inch yellow baseline. So we're going to locate that one. Okay, I found it on the screen there. It says drag that template to the editor window and right click while dragging and reflect it. So that means that we probably have colors on the wrong side so it's just easy to flip it and move it over there and then we're going to drop the pavement marking template off on top of the concrete center line point and it will turn white. So let's do that. So we're going to come out here and it says drag this out and we're going to right click while we're dragging and reflect it. Once we do that, we're going to come over here to the concrete TCL and when the point turns white, we're going to left click and just drop it there. Okay, and that's the baseline and that's what we want. We want the baseline to be yellow, so reflecting it, put the yellow over on this side. So you can see in step 11 there, it's got a picture uh, in the exercise that shows that the pavement marking point and the edge pavement point are placed in the middle of the roadway. So we need to move that edge of pavement point to be on top of the other edge of pavement point in the ramp 4 template. So we're going to right click on the new point which is the asphalt surf TEOP and delete both constraints. So let's do that. So we're looking for that asphalt surf TEOP. We're going to right click over that red point and we're going to delete both constraints. It should turn green which it does. Then we're going to go back in to the next step which is 13. That asphalt surf TEOP point will turn green and it means all constraints have been removed. We're going to right click over it and we're going to move the point next. And then we're going to move that point over the left concrete TEOP. So what we're going to do is you'll notice this point here is actually tied to that one. So our edge of pavement is tied to the edge of pavement here. Um, so we're going to right click over the green point, hit move point, zoom back out, and we're going to place that right over the concrete TEOP on the left. As you can see the edge of pavement is moving and the, pa the pavement marking is moving right along with it. So that point will turn white and we'll drop it off there and it has moved. Okay, so we've moved the point. All right, that got us to here. It says right click again over that same EOP point and merge those points together. And then we're going to delete the asphalt surf TEOP when it asks. So we're going to right click over the white point and do a merge point. Which one do you want to get rid of? We're going to get rid of the Asphalt Surf TEOP. So then we're left with one point. If we uh, want to take a look at that pavement marking point now, you'll see that it is now looking at the left concrete TEOP instead of the asphalt. So we'll double click and make sure that that is doing that. You can find the pavement marking here. You can double click on it. And you can see now it is being controlled by the left concrete T EOP. Okay. So it's as simple as moving points to where you need them to go in your template. All right. As we slide down here, now it says go ahead and close that point properties, which we just did, and click OK to the editor box, and then take a look at your 3D model. So we'll say OK here. And then our 3D model, we should have those markings appear in our right window, in our 3D window. 
All right, since there's two templates in this corridor, we must make the change to the second template as well. So we're going to locate the second template, the purple dash handle, which is located here, you'll see. And we're going to go back and do those same steps to get uh, beyond where we were at. So we're going to come out here, and if you look, if you zoom down, you will see that there is no pavement marking down at this end. So we need to modify that and add that to it. So the steps we used were we opened up the template drop right here with the second heads up tool. This time you shouldn't have to reflect it because it's already set to reflect, but we'll take a look. So we're going to find pavement markings here on the left, one lane ramps, Got that first one in there, four inch white right edge and four inch yellow baseline. And we'll drag that out. And if we zoom in to the concrete TCL, we'll drop that off right there when the point turns white. And you can see it's center solid yellow. So that is the correct color. Uh, it's again, dropped it off here. So it's a simple Right click over the EOP, delete both constraints, right click over the EOP, move point, and we're going to go move that to the left concrete T EOP, and left click, and then all we're going to do is right click over that white point and do a merge points, and delete the asphalt surf T EOP. So now both points have been placed on there, and all we have to do is click OK, and you will have your pavement markings out there by your template. Alright, there's a little note here. It says the points in template 1 and template 2 are named the same and will report back as one element for the full length of the corridor. If for some reason you want the pavement markings to be separated for quantities, simply rename the point for the pavement marking by adding a number to the end. For example, change the point name on template 2 from center line solid yellow to center line solid yellow 2. This will separate them out. You would then need to add a start station value to the second set of pavement markings. For this example, you would change that start station to 2 plus 50. So what I'm doing here with this one, if we go back and look at this, it treats our edges of pavement as one piece throughout here. Even though it's in two separate templates, it treats it as one because in the template, in each template, that point is the same name. So if you ran a report, currently on this, it would give you the full length of that whole entire thing. And that might be what you want in that case, or it might not be. So what it's saying is if you didn't want that to all run as one piece, you could open up the template drop for the side that you want to change. So if you wanted the top to be separate from this second section, you could open up the template drop for that second section. And you can say on the uh, the yellow center line, you could zoom into there and you've got the yellow center line point. You could double click it. And up here at the top, center line solid yellow, you could just put a two after that and apply that. And then once you close and okay it, it still is out there, but it no longer acts as one piece. So you've got now a section there and a section there. So if you were doing a report for this, you'd have to pick each individual element for it to report back. And then if you wanted this point here to have a different station, so in this case we were saying it was 2 plus 50 uh, because 2 plus 50 is where one template ends and the other begins, you would actually have to add a start station to this line. And that start station is done in the geometry tools. 
and then we've got the modify tools for horizontal a start station you've got this line that you just created here from the template you just go back to just before it as you can see it kind of locks it in there and you can left click it and you can tell it that that is 2 plus 50 and enter that in okay so now that actual element has a 250 start station so now if you were going to get a report on these and I believe that is the next portion of what we have here um, so we're going to run the report for the linear markings and we're going to run the horizontal geometry report we're going to select the white EOP payment markings and the yellow baseline in this case we'll have two because we made that change then we'll right click and then we'll just left click through the rest of it. Okay, so let's take a look at doing that. So if we want to run a report, I'm going to kind of zoom in where those two templates meet down here around 2 plus 50. And we're going to go look at the reports. So under geometry, reports, we've got the horizontal geometry report, which is the first one in there. We'll left click that. And then out here we're going to say locate the first element. So our first element, maybe we'll do the white edge of pavement there. And then we'll come in and do the two yellow ones that we have here. Locate the next or reset. We will go ahead and reset or right click. Our event points, we don't need any event points so we can left click that. Left click for no profiles. And it will open up the report. Now we do have that uh, report that was created for us and under the MoDOT drop down on the left MoDOT pavement markings and click on that and you can see our start stations are at 0, 0 and then we have that 2 plus 50 okay. and it goes to 5 plus 0, 0 so it's 250 foot in length so that is how you would go about getting correct stationing and everything for uh, linear elements Okay, and that completes that exercise for ramp 4 for adding the linear pavement markings.